Hello YouTube, this is my unboxing and review of a 3D printed 1x2x3 by a BukuBot. If you guys don't know what a BukuBot is, it is basically a 3D printer that you can buy and it's like a home 3D printer. And I decided to test out see how good the quality of this with a twisty puzzle. So let's get into it. Alright, I'm very excited. I've waited a very long time to see what this is going to look like. Whoa. Alright. So what do we got? Appears to have some kind of thing. Not sure what the, exactly this it looks. I think he mentioned he was gonna throw in a Bukubot keychain. So you can say Bukubot. That's cool. Must be pretty strong. And here's the puzzle. Oh my god. So this has been printed on a 3D printer. Right off the bat, the quality. Um, you can definitely see the lines. This puzzle has definitely. You can. You can clearly see that it has been 3D printed. Let's look at the pin. The pin's kind of interesting because it was completely 3D printed as well. Looks a little rough. Let's look at some of the pieces. We got uh, appears to be a center, and this is the center. I guess I don't know exactly how that's gonna work. I guess you glue that on. Yeah, I guess you glue that on. All right. And what else do we have here? We have a Desmaker 3D printing. You can see some other things that have been 3D printed. There's a picture of the 3D printer. All right. And I guess for some reason he sent me three of those. So that's cool. So I'm going to go ahead and try to assemble this and get back to you. So I just started trying to assemble this and I've already noticed a couple things that is kind of a little bit disappointing. Right now this is uh, one of the center pieces and basically this pin is supposed to fit through that hole and or it doesn't fit so I'm gonna have to sand down the pin which is kind of disappointing. It's gonna take a long time. Another thing that is kind of strange is these edges and these centers don't fit push them in, that's as far as they'll go. So I'm gonna have to sand down everything on these edges, centers, so yeah, it's gonna be a lot more than just assembling a puzzle. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes and so far all I got is about this. So I've been able to get the pin through the hole. I had to sand the pin forever on this block of sandpaper. And it does turn, but the pin's not turning. It's just turning inside that one. But uh, it does seem to be working pretty well so far. The circles do stay in alignment when it has been turned, so there's no faults that way. The problem, though, this cap doesn't fit. So I'm going to have to sand around the end of that pin a ton to make this cap fit on, so, you know, you hide the mechanism. So that's that. Alright, so I started sanding an edge to get it to fit into the core. So you can see this is before it doesn't completely fit in, but after it totally flush, turns okay. And it's actually really easy to sand these pieces, so I'm gonna go do that to the other seven, no, three corners. Alright, so basically as of now, I've gotten two of the edges sanded, and it's starting to turn. And the turning on this puzzle is not too bad. Like, this pin is not actually glued in yet, because I haven't done final assembly, but for now, I mean, this slice looks like it's going to be effortless, and this is looking very good as well. So, we'll see. When I get back to you guys, it'll be fully assembled. Hey guys, um, right before I do final assembly, I'll also get it on film here, but uh, I want to just quickly show you guys, if any of you guys want to actually get this, um, I'll show you guys what I did to turn the pieces from the rough shape 
too uh, usable. So let's start with the pin. So the pin, what I did was it was rough here, so I just took this block and just started sanding that down. So you need to sand that. And this one, I took this file and I just kind of filed the inside so it got a bit bigger. So now it fits and spins very nicely. Also, I round, like I smoothed out the end of the pin, like I just made it smaller so it can rotate freely in this because it didn't fit before. For this piece, I did absolutely nothing. It's just completely as it came. Basically because it's too hard to fit uh, some kind of uh, file in there. I tried, but I couldn't. And these pieces are impossible to file. So what I did was I just sanded down the pin until it would fit. And it fits now pretty well. For the edges, or I guess corners, what I did was Basically, I took some sandpaper, sanded down the top of this. Also sanded out this line here so it would fit better. I took a file. And I just sort of filed in around here until it fit into the centerpiece as well. And also kind of filed along the top of it like that so it would uh, fit better. So right, I'm going to assemble it now. Pieces when it sh works should be completely flush. It was impossible to get that at the beginning. Alright. Get the pieces set up. Looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna put the pin in. I'm gonna just put it over like a cross right here. And then I'm going to grab some super glue. Okay. And I'm going to push down so it stays nice and tight. I'm going to let the glue dry. So I've let it dry now. I still haven't made any turns didn't quite clamp all the way, you can see a little bit of a gap there, but whatever. Now I'm going to glue on this little cap. Alright, so it's been a couple hours and I've stickered it and broken it in a little bit and these turns are actually extremely good. Pretty much one finger. These turns, not too bad anymore actually, like they, they're getting there. Like not one finger, there's a little more resistance than that, but not bad. No, wait, that's not the checker pad. Checker pattern totally works. When it's been checkered, there really isn't too many gaps or anything. This puzzle absolutely does not rattle at all. So, the finishing product, pretty good. Yeah, so I just want to talk a little bit about uh, just whether or not I think this puzzle was a good puzzle. When I got it, I mean, you guys all saw, like, there was no way this was ever going to work unless I did quite a bit of sanding. But that's okay. I mean, it wasn't that much work. I, ne I did not modify it in any way. I simply just sanded it so... I sanded what was already there, so I sanded it so it could turn properly and fit together. Now, some of you may think, well, man, that's like the worst quality 3D printed thing I've ever seen. You know, I don't want to sand all the pieces. This is 
this is too much and I mean if you do look up close you can clearly see this has definitely been 3D printed but yeah you can see all the little lines some imperfections and stuff right there over here you can definitely see this has been 3D printed but I mean you gotta keep in mind this is not like a big company or anything this is not a million dollar or even a very expensive 3D printer that made this it's just a company starting off you know this is just a sample they are kind enough to um, be able to get and another reason is I have seen some of the pictures on their websites I mean this 3D printer that it was made out of I'm sure is capable of a little bit more quality in this but you gotta realize that the 3D printer that this was made on it basically only it's like it's always working and it's always making other 3D printers because basically this guy who made the Buku bot. I'm pretty sure that he's working around the clock trying to get all these uh, orders in from a thing called Kickstarter and basically it was a bit overfunded so he got way too many orders and even like two months later he's still trying to keep up and the higher quality you print these things on the longer it takes so it's not like this guy had forever like to print these because you know other people have been waiting two months for their orders so I'm sure that he just kind of sped it up a little bit and the reason why I can definitely guarantee that this has been sped up a little bit was this keychain the Bugubot keychain that came with this the quality on this is actually really good and it's hard to see but you know, on the camera but there's actually these like honeycomb structures inside you can see because this is clear Look at the quality of this. And it is really nice. I mean, you can see all the layers. Very, very rounded. The back of this, you know, you can see it, but it's actually pretty smooth. And this is tiny. I mean, that's my thumb. That's how small the lines are. little imperfections and stuff but that doesn't matter so this puzzle is definitely capable of I meant this printer is definitely capable of some very high quality things and in the future the that 3d printer will be available and I'm just saying like this is definitely not the quality you guys would expect from this I mean like when they actually get into mass production, I think I might get a 3D printer and attempt to print some puzzles. Looking at this, and what this has taught me a little bit, is that it's definitely capable of printing bigger puzzles. Like, I would not, like a Terraminx or something, no way, but I mean, like, a 3x3, three three, yeah, maybe, maybe pieces of a Megaminx, you know. And also, I know that it is able to thread screws and make screws because this has a screw in it and it's threaded in there. So yeah, that's kind of my view on this whole 3D printed thing. Um, the, the puzzle actually turned out very well in the end. I'm very happy with it. It's pretty easy to solve. I just want to say thank you to uh, Diego, I think that's what your name is, for printing this. Um, I'm glad I could get it, and uh, yeah, I also would like to say thank you to all my subscribers. Um, my goal is to reach 20 subscribers by the end of October, and at this rate, I'm for sure going to make that. I mean, last video I made, which was two days ago, I had seven subscribers all the way up to, t I'm all the way up to 10 now, so that's been great, or 11, I'm not sure, probably 11, but yeah. And also got 500 views in the past few days, so that's been great. So this is my uh, video on the 1x2x3 printed on a Buku bot. So thank you for watching, and have a good day.